Hey guys, what's going on? It's Jazz here, also known as Paradox, and today is my legs video. <laughs> Let's put it that way. I've been to work today, I've been a, a bit busy, so I haven't had much time to do anything. So I've basically just got in, I've jumped on my Xbox, realised I haven't actually put a video up today, and thought, oh crap, here we go. So, I've got a 10 minute video, I'm going to work it on, and talk about the advantages of um, gaming equipment, and the prices, and whether they're worth it or not. So, first of all, I'm going to start off with headsets. Now, these days, there's a wide variety of gaming headsets you could get. Now, back in the day, the only headsets you could basically get were either Astros or Turtle Beaches. Now, um, I've spoken about my first headset in the past, the Turtle Beach X41s, and uh, I would, like I said, they were the greatest headset I uh, that was out at the time and whatnot. But nowadays, there's about eight different brands, each company does their own brand, um, each brand's got about seven models, so there's around about a good hundred and some headsets you can choose from. And the headset I recommend to most people when they ask me what headset should I buy, I only recommend one headset and one headset only, and that's the Turtle Beach PX21s. Now they're a cheap and effective headset. You can pick them up for around £45 these days, which is a really, really good price for considering they used to be an 80 quid headset when they first came out. Now I've um, I've recommended and pe uh, the, from my recommendation three people have bought the headset and they've all said that it is the best headset they they could have bought for the money. Now if you're willing to spend a bit more money you go, you, you're going to want to shop around. You see you've got the choice of the Astro 2013 gaming headset which is just the A40s but they're with a new mix amp and they're a 7.1 surround sound headset instead of 5.1. But if you're also in that price range you can also look at the, P uh, the Turtle Beach XP500s, the PX5s from Turtle Beach as well and the Turtle Beach 7 series. Now the 7 series from the Turtle Beach is an absolutely flawless headset and um, they're what I'm looking to pick up next or whether, whether they ring out the next one up from those because I'm still, I'm still content with my XP 500s considering I spent, uh, considering I spent 800, well, 800 pounds, sorry, 190 pounds on them and that was when they were brand new. Um, the other thing I have to be able to say about headsets is they, they're not worth picking up for Black Ops 2. Now, uh, this bit's actually really bullshit in my game. I actually get killed by my own escort drone. As you just saw then, it hit me, and then my escort drone kills me. I was raging at that point. Anyway, so the um, I'm waiting for the next Turtle Beach headset to come out, because I'm not going to pick up the 7 straight away. I'm normally going to do what I do with the iPhones with them. I'm going to skip a generation and hit the next. Like, I've got the 4S, I'll probably get the 5S, and so on and so forth. So, controllers. Now, controllers, you've got a... A smaller choice because uh, if you're going into competitive gameplay, you're going to um, you're going to be you're going to have a very small choice of what to choose from. You can either have a well, you can have a scuff or a regular. You see, the only problem is with scuff controllers is they they are expensive and they don't really and they don't they don't really work for all people. You have to have a certain sort of mindset and a certain hand grip to kind of work around a scuff controller and even then a certain scuff controller might work for one person but not for another which is what I'll get into in a second so imagine custom controllers and HD controllers are all modded controllers with turbo pads or modded trigger fingers or you know fast firing pads uh, a scuff controller basically just has hairpin triggers and uh, the best way to describe it is it's a legal controller so nothing, nothing wrong with it is Basically, you're going to get frowned upon for using it. It's all fine to use. Um, besides from that, you've also got... Um, sorry, my my Vegas is messing up a little bit, so I'm just confused <laughs> what to look at. Apart from that, uh, Scuff have actually got a great package on at the moment where you can buy a controller and, uh, and case and grip for about 80 quid, and that's their best. That's like the, one of their best deals, which comes with all the add-ons on the controller. Uh, personally, I use the Scuff Pinky, and that's because I have the A and B buttons mapped to the back of the controller so I can jump and knife at ease because I play on tactical layout anyway. Um, for this game, for Black Ops 2, it's worth it. For the next COD, we're not going to be able to tell. Does it work with Xbox One? We're not going to be able to tell. And that brings... Um, I'll come back on to headsets and the Xbox One in a second. Alright, so Xbox One. My scuff controller might not work. I've got a wired controller. I, the reason I got a wired was the hope it would work with next gen because I heard the rumours that the controller wasn't changing much bar from like pressure sensitive buttons and stuff so this now is where I'm hoping to high heavens that my scuff controller is going to work with the Xbox One otherwise I've wasted uh, well I won't have wasted it will have been a short lived uh, value for money situation 
Uh, you'll see me jump around corners and jump shot people, and that's mainly thanks to the scuff controller with me ne not being able to aim and shoot at the uh, jump at the same time. So um, it w I can jump with my left paddle, which sounds like this. So it sounds like that, and it allows me to jump in whilst keeping my right thumbstick on the aiming stick. So as you've just seen, I'm actually losing in this game. Uh, there's only me and Joker in a party, so I'm not actually in a six-man. So it's just me and Joker, and we're down by 20 points, and our team aren't really doing much. So I thought, right, this is time for me to bring out the big gun and start playing properly. And I was actually going to talk this game, and I probably still will, how to not lose a game. <laughs> because I go absolutely ham second half. I realise the pressure, and I realise what I've got to do. So I just, I, I hop to it, basically. Alright, going back to the scuff controller. So with me being able to jump around corners, I don't think it gives me a massive advantage over players who don't have a scuff controller, but yet it gives me a visible advantage uh, for cost cost to um, cost to purchase it, about mine, 90 quid. Uh, cost, uh, cost to gunfight win ratio, not worth 90 quid. But um, it was disposable income for me at the time, and now it's no longer is, so on and so forth. Um, right, headsets and Xbox One. Xbox One will support all current all current headsets for sound. That means the chat cables will no longer work, meaning they've changed either changed the port to a from a 3.5 millimeter to maybe to a full size port. We don't I can't actually tell yet. Um, I'll be happy to know if it'll be a Bluetooth headset because in that case my XP 500 could be a simple remap and I'll be able to use it. Um, a few other headsets will be able to do that too. One of them being uh, the Steel Series Siberia. Oh god, what are they called? Not the V2s, because they're a PC gaming headset, it'll be the ones after that. Um, if you're looking for a, a universal headset, so one you can use for your PC and your Xbox and your phone, I would highly recommend the Sennheiser uh, 363Ds, which is one of the main headsets that I got linked by one of my close friends, once again, Tom. <laughs> he does so, we do so much together, it's unbelievable. Um, he actually sent me the link to the headsets and told me to have a good look at them. So I started to have a look at them and wow, they do look like a fantastic headset. Right, so this is the part of the game where we're just... I'm just going to jump off topic for a second. We're down by 25, uh, 24 points at this point. Now we're up by down by 21. We've got all three flags and I've got a swarm. So I've called in the swarm to shorten the gap. Because if you didn't know, for every minute you hold all three flags on domination, you get 36 points worth of like out of the 200. Now, for every for every two flags to their one flag, you only get 12 points lead. So you'll still get the you you get 24 points in total per minute, but you'll get 12 points um, over the enemy team. So when you're looking at the scoreboard, you can kind of work out whether you need to triple cap or you can hold the two flags for the whole game. Now, rarely ever am I down from the first round. Normally, we're about 100, 112 points to 50 is the average we end the round on, which is, you know, the full time limit spent with all five flags, uh, two flags of the five minutes. Um, now, right, regardless, now this is where I start just going ham and winning the game for the team. Uh, so from the Sennheisers, you've also got the Razor Chimeras, which Tom bought, and he wouldn't recommend to a player from now on. <laughs> that's purely from his experience with them being well, they're only rechargeable so you can't you know quickly switch batteries like I can and whatnot. Um that's the only problem with Turtle Beach headsets is they are they're fully battery reliant so you need a battery to, you need batteries to use them but you can easily pick up a rechargeable battery pack uh, which is what I've done and I've been doing ever since I had my X41s which is a long ass time ago <laughs> so I've had a headset since COD 4 um, I'd recommend it to anyone up till Black Ops 2 you do not need a headset for Black Ops 2. If you do get a headset, get the cheat, cheapest one you want. Don't go quids in and on, quids in on them, because nowadays you can't hear footsteps. Super Crunch makes no difference, and um, to be honest, the Black Ops series has ruined sound whoring and the ability to do it, because it is part of a skill set you need to have to be able to be effective at Call of Duty. Like if you um, if you can't afford a headset, then I agree you shouldn't be punished against it. But I feel as if you could always have the counter option. This is the reason I actually bought a headset was so my stepmom stopped moaning at me for playing the game volume so so loud. And I, it later became known to me about so, sound whoring and stuff with the ability to um, turn my headset up to full. And even when somebody was using dead silence, I could hear someone across the map in the rustles or something. And it, it, it's a good experience when you when you're good with sound whoring and you can you're, full, you're pulling off all your shots. It's a it's a nice it's a nice effect. Uh, MW2 and MW3 had great sound, great footsteps. 
and it just seems like Infinity Ward like to um, you know reward a player for enjoying their game and doing so much for the game. So once again, I got the 10 minute delay uh, black screen on my Xbox, so I had to wiggle my analog stick and carry on the recording. Uh, but World at War was a great for footsteps, and oh, the volume of when people said things. Like, um, you could jump in a lobby and all you hear is, um, the enemy, do enemy soldiers in the dojo! Or something like that, and it was, it was brilliant. That game sounded, sounded beautiful through a headset. But right, this game's just coming to a close. I've given you my opinion on what not to buy and what to buy from headsets. If you want an actual detailed list of what you can buy and what I would recommend, just let me know in the comments section below and I'll be sure to help out. Alright guys, it's been Jazz, also known as Paradox. I want to say thank you for watching this video and I'm going to go play some cool